This week on Lift Dark Builds, I start this giant metal sign. Come play with us. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this subtle diss. Lift Arc was not prepared to receive this order. <laughs> Did what? you see that? Yeah. Well, yeah, so apparently they tried to deliver it last Friday. Um, I was here last Friday. I don't know how they missed me. And then they give me this? Come on. Okay, so the task at hand is to make a almost eight foot tall sign for Roanoke Parks and Rec, or Play Roanoke. Among other things, they are, you know, the organization in town that's responsible for outdoor events, promotions, cam campaigns, you know, any of those sort of like, get the kids outside to play more type things. That's these guys, and they're great for it. They put on Roanoke Go Fest, which is one of the biggest outdoor festivals, I would, I would argue, in Southwest Virginia, which we've had the good fortune of filming for in 2019. But they have hired us, me and us, to build them four letters that stand on their own that together spell play. So we have the font, we have the steel here. Uh, we're gonna cut the letters out of four four by eight sheets of eighth inch steel, and then we're gonna build a back spine to make them not as floppy and a base for them so that they can be anchored to the ground but also be picked up with a forklift and moved around and in front of me here on the screen is a digital version of their latest play magazine and i just wanted to get a sense of what this whole play sign is all about um, it's going to be put outside of a local school um, it's mobile so that i imagine they're going to move it around different venues and whatnot and the letters themselves are gonna be decorated with things like baseball bats, park signs. They're gonna wrap, you know, bike gears, things that inspire uh, the outdoors. So I'm kind of flipping through this magazine to get a sense of what it is, and what they do. You know, they do a lot of like, you know, children's outreach programs. They plant trees and, and do community gardens. They work on playgrounds, anything that has anything to do with outside. So anyway, let's jump in here to the mission. So I'm going to pull up in route, which is my chosen punishment software. And I have imported a P from the font. And now this red square is a four by eight sheet. The problem is when you scale something like this proportionally, as it gets taller, it also gets wider. So it looks like we're only able to get 80 inches. So that's like 6.6 .6 feet. That's basically as tall as I am, which isn't bad, but what I wanna do is figure out how the other letters sort of play out. Let's do an L. See, now this is what I was worried about. The L is skinnier. We can go taller with the L. The L can fill the whole sheet and result in lots of wasted material. <laughs> so we have a crossroad. It's sort of like a least common denominator thing here. Like, do we just figure out which letter is gonna be the shortest and make them all that size? Or do we try to squeeze the P? <laughs> we try to, um, we try to narrow the P. <laughs> we gotta, we got, guys, we gotta figure out how to squeeze the P, okay? what I just did would take too much time and it doesn't make any sense anyway. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bifurcate, to use a power word, this A. All right, there's half the A. And theoretically, I'll just cut out two of these. P is, 
He's six foot six. Yeah, but is that big enough? I mean, that's tall as me, right? Yeah. I mean, if you saw a letter this big, does that feel like the love signs and stuff? Does that feel about proportionate? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, see, that's, that's right on. That's seven foot. Yeah, okay. So then let's, that'll be our metric then. The P is gonna be our metric. So we're gonna shoot for 80 inches. See, there we go. We can get two halves of the A out of one sheet. The L is easy. We'll just resize that. Okay, so we have an 80 inch P. <laughs> Both halves of the Y and one half of the A, and then the other half of the A and the L. Three sheets, I bought four sheets. I got a free sheet. Okay, so we're done plotting. Ooh, update since last. I have enabled that computer on the network, and now there's a shared folder that instead of putting it on a pen drive every time, I can just hit output to folder and it outputs to a folder on the desktop of that computer. It's no longer 2008. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, right, totally. All right. There's the steel. Here I am. Here's the forklift. Plasma cutter's ready. Let's do this. So here's what we'll be using for these letters. These are four by eight sheets, eighth inch steel. There's four of them here. I believe I'll be able to do it in three, but we shall see. Never hurts to order more. I'll be able to use it on something else. So yeah, I'm gonna cut these strips off. I'm gonna set them down over here. I'll grab the top one lay it on the machine. We'll square it up and we'll program the first letter and start cutting. Okay, so we're gonna just kind of rinse and repeat with this. Got the P cut. I'm gonna pull it off the table, dry it off, stack it over there. Just keep going with all the parts of the letters. Hopefully by the end of the day, we will weld the letters together and have them all uh, assembled. And I'd like to just lay them out on the floor and get a sense of what we're dealing with. That way I can come up with dimensions for the bases. The bases are gonna have to be different sizes because you know the A comes out real wide and the P comes down on one leg. So, the, you know, I'd like to come up with some sort of uniformity for all the bases that I will be building out of the one inch and inch and a quarter square tubing. So, yeah, good stuff though. P went great. That's the biggest singular cut that I was gonna be making today and I've got eighth inch dialed in on this shop saber. So, super killer. I don't worry about this thing near as much now that I have that collision detection head because I know it'll just stop if it hits something or if it dives too deep. But now that I have a really good air dryer, I don't have any of the torch height control problems that I was having a while ago. So things are hunky dory. So I'm gonna do all the things that I said earlier.
uh, it's probably self-explanatory, but this is what I'm doing. So um, when they come off the plasma cutter, they've got a little bit of dross on it. And again, dross is molten steel that didn't quite let go of the base metal. So I'm taking a flap disc here on my angle grinder. There are tools made to bevel a piece of metal after the, it comes off the plasma cutter and makes us go a little faster. I don't have one. I have an angle grinder, an old cobalt angle grinder that I've had for almost a decade. There's some loose parts in there somewhere. But just going over the edges, uh, one, to get rid of the dross, and two, because this whole sign is gonna be handled by people. And I wanna make sure that there's no sharp edges to cut the little kids or, or the adults that uh, could sue someone. <laughs> Welcome to America. So yeah, just doing that. And then I'm laying the letters out on the ground to get them off my way, out of my way, off the table, off my way. Once I weld everything together, it's gonna be such a great reveal. Stick around to the end. If you haven't already, smash that like button. that subscribe button up. Hit the bell, because everybody likes bells. Or don't. <laughs>